Anime Summit, Episode 63. But there really is spaceship insurance. It's kind of interesting. I looked it up because I wanted to insure my spaceship that I call my dick. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Anime Summit Podcast. My name is Quoka, and with me I've got Mac. I'm running out of shit to say on these. We're doing so Just many. Keep of orgasming, them. Mac. <laughs> we also got Sam. What it do? What it do? And then we also got Nick. Hello. Oh. And later we're gonna talk about sci-fi technology and movies and stuff. Movies versus TV. I just don't talk to them anymore. <laughs> I, I can't hear you. Are you talking to us, Sam? I can't hear you. You talk so quietly. Don't talk to Sam anymore. Alright, let's move on. <laughs> Any news so, for this week, fellas? Uh, <laughs> it's I have the news. same news as last week. No, I have news. <laughs> Jap- Japan is just produced its last ever VCR. May they rip in peace. So, that's news right there. If you want your anime VHS tapes, you can't say hoard rip that in shit peace. now. Rip in peace means rest in peace in peace. Rip in yeah, peace. Yeah, it's uh, recursive or iterative or whatever which one of those are. Whatever it is. Whatever it be you do. I know, but he said... Okay, never mind. I never did that on purpose, Sam. Shit! Shut up! Bitch! <laughs> What? But yeah, no more VCRs, fellas. And Persona 5 up. Animation got a trailer. Dude, that's what, that's what it's about. Persona, Persona never 5 played Persona. Hype. What is, is Persona, Persona for me? I have no fucking clue. Persona is high favorite. school kids that bang each other and then dream about beating each other up. What? Oh. So that's like everybody. That's literally not what it is. But yeah, okay. <laughs> that's exactly what it is. <laughs> Except a, the way you said it was it's sounds a stupid. Dating so Sam no, it's not during the day and a magic brawler at night. Do they have dr- so it's like Nisekoi? Do they have dreams that the that their girlfriend is a dog? No. <laughs> don't listen to Koga, please, for the love of God. That was a great episode, of Nisekoi. I don't, I don't, by the way, I don't know what's happening? I think here. that was the OVA. I don't. Sam's just scared that I know too much about Persona, and that he won't get to be. He knows nothing be about the it. Persona fan girl. He's John Snowing that shit. Quoka, you know noth- nothing. Although I can't say shit because I've only beaten the third one. John Snow. You've only eaten the third one? Beaten the third... <laughs> Shut up. Man, you guys are stupid today. Like, except for Mac and Nick. <laughs> All right, move on. You guys, you guys are stupid you guys, except for Except for Quoka everybody except Mac. that one person. <laughs> Don't. I'm too tired for this shit. Why are you so tired, Mac? I I felt terrible all day. <laughs> Why you feel terrible all day, Mac? I don't know. I felt like I was gonna fucking hurl all day. Why'd you Maybe feel like you, you were gonna should, hurl uh, all day, Mac? I don't Mac, know. Pour yourself a glass of anime. <laughs> pour myself a glass. <laughs> if only, if only it worked like that. I stole that, that from the Antifix podcast. Shout out to them. <laughs> wow! Just go and steal material. Hey, Very I don't want to nice. get called out. Like I'm giving them credit for it. Nice. That was a great intro they did, by the way. I don't know which one, what episode it was. Just pull yourself a glass of anime, yeah. guys. But they said it really seductively, so it was pretty funny. Pour yourself a glass of anime. That, is, that just and sounds really pour refreshing it to me. all like, over yourself. I feel like rub Aria it into is a your glass nipples. of anime. Just rub it into chew. your nipples. Buff that yeah, shit you, out. You, you, you don't have the voice for it. Buff that shit out until it looks like You can't rub peaches. it into your nipples if you're in the Berserk universe. Nobody got it looks like you're there. wearing diamond necklaces and shit. Yeah, you you don't have the voice. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's not it's not seductive enough. So do we do we have a waifu of the week? <laughs> you mean a waifu Let's pick of a this sci-fi week? Sci-fi waifu, guys. <laughs> How about the girl from Plastic Memories? She's sci-fi, She's right? Sci- I- Isla. Who? Or we could do the Chobits. I haven't seen Chobits. So. Chi? Chi? No, She's I like Isla. There. Nah, man. Plastic memories, as I call it. I love. No one's ever thought of that. I'm the first from one to say plastic it. memories. She's a lame. She's lame. a Rei Ayanami clone. Yeah, she's a Rei Ayanami clone in almost every lame. way. 
But she There's makes good tea, and Rei Ayanami doesn't make tea. Because Rei Ayanami yeah, is like, shit. She just has pictures of water. <laughs> Rei Ayanami just has a picture of water in her room and nothing else. Yeah. Wait, why don't we do Rei Ayanami for this episode? No, because Isla yeah. is better because she can make tea. She's an improvement on Rei Ayanami in every possible way. Well, that's not saying that's much. Except maybe bus size. That's a good question. Uh, but there's a funny much. scene in that show where they did the exact replica of the scene where Shinji falls on top of Ray, but it was instead of it was the other guy falls on top Isla, and they did it shot for shot. It was pretty funny. Cool story. That's so cool. But yeah, story. that show, Plastic Memories. It's like uh, Your Lie in April, but about one one hundredth as good. No, it's like Blade Runner, or Androids Dream of Electric Sheep. But one tenth is good, because no Harrison Ford. No gal. No. <laughs> There's no Harrison Ford. No. no Harrison Ford, best girl. No. No gal. So yeah, We're Isla's best girl. You should send us pictures of covers from Dojins that feature Isla on gal. our Twitter at Anime Summit. I feel like I know someone in real life who looks kind of like her. Isla. I just realized that now. She has blue hair. No. She's 12 years old? Yeah. (laughs) No. I don't know. She's 12 years old, dude. She's 12 years old. Yeah, now Coca's interested. Ha ha. Very interesting. Jokes. No, 14. 14, okay. 14 is the minimum. Because that that means they can pilot an Ava. If they can can pilot an Ava, then they're fair game. Is Ava she needs to at least have dick? gotten her first Pokemon from Professor Oak. Yeah, that new Professor Oak that looks like a male stripper. The it's new Professor Oak, Oak reminds me of uh It's Rick. not called Oak at all. He looks like Rick. Why can't we be from, Morty? Wait, Rick Sanchez? Yes. Yes, Rick Sanchez. Or Rick from Walking Dead. <laughs> Rick Sanchez. I just said Morty, god damn it. So. Rick Grimes? Uh <laughs> Technology and sci-fi anime, I guess. Like robots and stuff. We should... Let's talk about that. All right. Let's go. Let's start from the beginning. So back 1896, in... 1896, <laughs> Frankenstein. I actually don't so know if that's the first anime of all kind happened to be about a robot. Astro Boy. All right. Nobody gives a fuck anymore. They had big eyes. Astro Boy. Moving on to the 70s. Uh... <laughs> Seriously, I don't. I don't like when people always use Astro Boy as like, oh, but everything stems from Astro Boy. Like, no, it doesn't. Right, and and they and half of the time when people say that they've never like read or watched it, it's like, guys, did you know that anime would not exist if we didn't have fire? The pinnacle of anime <laughs> or the wheel is oh Speed Racer, I mean, in which Speed Racer oh yeah, drives a supercar known as the Lamborghini Ferrari. And he wins all the races before giving his I'm car sorry. to James Bond. That, you know, like there's sometimes when Is you. Is that troll, really what happened? I didn't actually know. And it's like. Never watched Speed Racer. It's like it's more insulting than funny. <laughs> like, what the hell are you talking about? He drove the Mach 5. And James Bond was never in it. <laughs> the only thing I know about Speed Racer is that they talk really fast. Like in that Dexter's Laboratory episode when they're all making fun of Speed Racer, they're like, I have to go fast. Ha 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 ha. And they kept saying ha ha during the whole episode. Well, that's because when something like crazy happened in the anime, oh, they'd be like, oh. oh. <laughs> they're trying to match the lip flaps a little Dude. like. You guys got to watch the Dexter's Lab episode with Speed Racer. I think uh, I, I I I probably saw it years and years ago. That's yeah. good. It's just enough. like one. It's just like a five second thing. But it's well, funny. Dexter's Lab episodes are like eight minutes or something. They're just super short. Not as good as Courage the Cowardly Dog. Courage the Cowardly Dog. Naughty. Watch where you're going, you fool. Yeah, what? <laughs> um, <laughs> all right, that's not sci-fi. How do you guys, guys like your sci-fi technology? Like in terms of, uh how real it could potentially like, be like not necessarily well, obviously like when way. you're going for sci-fi it's not real hence the fi part but you know is yeah. it based on existing principles that maybe technology hasn't quite hit that point or do you prefer when it's I'm like crazy say, stuff like, that why nick you say your make, thing and i'm gonna go why would it. somebody make a robot that you couldn't fuck okay so nick's answer is <sighs> stupid i have a real answer <laughs> <laughs> um, the thing is, is like when you're watching, okay, I guess I'm only talking about this genre in particular, I suppose. 
because we can talk about big robots later. I think that's going to take up a lot of time. But uh, one of my favorite things, and like I've said it before, is um, it's like a group of chicks and they get like armor or some kind of sexy armor or something like that. Like in Simpho Gear and Galaxy Fraulein Yuna, it like just appears. You know what I mean? Like it's just like there's not really a science to it. It's more magical girl looking. When they well, transform, they have, uh, yeah, they have like a little. But in Kantai collection, ass. the armor actually gets deployed onto them. Right. Okay. Let me finish my thing before you fucking Co-opt it? interrupt before the brown I agree person with on you? the cast. <laughs> before you, yeah. Why don't you, Koka? Why don't you shut up and not agree with me? Everybody's stupid except for. Wait. Everybody's stupid except for. <laughs> I said that wrong. Me. <laughs> 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 You're all stupid except for some. Wait, no. So, so like in Galaxy God Fallen Yuna and Simple Gear, then I don't really care about it. You know what I mean? Even though, even though it is cybernetic armor and robotic armor, I, I'm still just more like ca- magic. Yeah, because like Simple Gear is like this like relic. Well, or no, there's right? like hard sci-fi, and then like I don't know if it's called soft sci-fi, but like hard sci-fi is where they real like Ghost in the Shell, where like they get it, like it's realistic. It, it could actually like the, happen. Like they create a science to it. Yeah, yeah. Like or like in Bubblegum Crisis, Tokyo Twenty Four. It obeys a law like, of physics <laughs> and thermodynamics they, and stuff. It's actual armor that they like. It uses a teleporting system to teleport it on their body, but then they can actually just put it on, put it on, if they want to as well. But what's weird about it is that they never explain because like when the guy makes the hard suit. And I don't know if Coke has gotten this far yet or Nick, have Nick's gotten this far. I'm on episode three. I haven't started. Okay, then you probably... I remember the girl putting floppy disks into the computer and hacking somebody. Okay, like there's, <laughs> there's like it, it shows a part where how he builds a hard suit. And it, it's, it looks like a big bulky robot made with like a bunch of like cube like things. And then he presses a button and then it transforms into the form. And they never really explain the science about that, which I wish they would have. But I guess it depends on what it is, if it bothers me or not. When it comes to big robot anime, it also depends on what it is. But most big robot anime, there's always like a... At least I would think it, it, it's mostly mechanical and not some kind of... Well, super robots are like physically impossible. You actually That's like something true. like Pacific Rim would would just fall, crush under its own weight or something. Well, it's not That's what I also heard. so much that. It's also that... The concept of a giant mech is just stupid. It's just a waste well, of materials that. and. Me- but even me- assuming it wasn't stupid, it's like physically it wouldn't even work. <laughs> um, maybe like a little robot, I don't like know. a body suit. I mean, that, that all that depends on how. If you, if how you have we like super nano the, particles or whatever. Well, I'm just saying we might assume that there's going to be advances in metallurgy that allow us to make stronger, lighter yeah. materials. Well, and that's another reason but why. Even I then, like, there's like the, there's like that. I don't know what the law is called, but it's like what is it? Law of cubes or fuck? What's that called? Anyway, it's like an animal or a living organism can't be bigger than a certain size because it'll just get crushed under its own weight. I don't know what the the law for that is called. I think it is. Law of yeah, but that's based on biological building blocks. But it's still kind different. of similar to. I know buildings keep getting bigger. Well, that's another reason why I liked Gasaraki because the robots in Gasaraki are like, they're kind of more just a bigger exosuit than a than a mech, you know? Yeah, but even exosuits some, are pretty yeah. stupid. Just no, make they, it something they, like a they tank. They help you lift things. Don't you know the exosuit? Yeah, but that's for a different like purpose than workers? like just, you know, fighting. A tank or gunship is always going to be better than a mech, except in... Actually, ridiculous well, sci-fi weapon. world where well if you're in space then you, a Gundam makes sense no it doesn't you'd Except want something like the matter. ball <laughs> because all those extra limbs are just things that you can't move without spinning yourself out ridiculously Please, you can have normal vector starship. thrusters just give me a starship yeah you'd want something that's as fixed as possible because then when you apply thrust you don't have to worry about hinges adjusting yeah, but then how do you get all the wacky arm flailing? But then, but then if somebody shoots part of your ship away, like it's probably important. So, like Gundam, you got to have some unimportant parts to fall <laughs> that's off. What, that way, it looks cool. That's what thrust vectoring is for. I'm just saying he's, we need like arms thrust. and legs to fall <laughs> off. Thrusting. Some some are born into greatness; others have it. I know thrust upon lots them. about orbital mechanics. I've played Kerbal Space Program. 
Oh, here we I go. know everything there is about space travel. Everything. Everything. Fun fact. I've watched Event Horizon, <laughs> if that counts. Fun fact. If in Kerbal Space Program, so Kerbal Space Program's speed model doesn't involve things like the special theory of relativity, you could theoretically get up to the speed of light. But to make a stock ship that would have, that would be capable of launching from the surface of Kerbin into space and then get up to the speed of light, the file for that ship would have more bits in it than there are atoms in the universe. But not as much sand as on the beach. Because <laughs> I know that there's a lot of sand. There's more sand on the right? beach than there are stars in the universe, yes. That's yeah, not true. see, science, fellas. There's more atoms in a grain of sand than there is a grain of sands on all the beaches. I thought it was the other way around. No, it's not. Atoms are tiny, yo. No, we just have to. That should be on a shirt. God, there's a funny Adams 4chan tiny, post yep. where he's like, if you. God, I don't remember what it was. Some guy was just. He's like. Good story, Nick. Great. Stop the atoms from moving or something. I don't remember what it was. <laughs> oh, cool story. So. I'm going to look it up. Then, Sam, you like it when your power suits at least have a basic principle of how they get deployed as opposed to just magical teleportation? Yeah, like, okay, because, like, the reason why Bubblegum Crisis Tokyo 2040 and shows like Symphal Gear and Yuna and Data Live are different is because, well, in Data Live, they're, like, straight up magical, so never mind, that doesn't count. But oh, in, like... Oh, 4chan post said he can shut down the atoms. <laughs> um, Good job, Nate. <clears throat> in, um, like, in uh, Symphal Gear, it's, like, a relic or whatever... They have like the sword of Durandal or something. Durandal. It's like this Durandal, Duran Duran. And uh, uh, Hibiki has like the Gungnir, like they're ancient relics from like history or whatever. But like, that's so fine. Magic. Then it's like okay, whatever. Then I don't need like a like a like scientific robotic explanation or whatever. But like when it comes to Bubblegum Crisis, like you you like watch the dude build it and then it like looks like a clunky boxy robot and then he presses some buttons and it automatically just turns into one of the hard suits and is like the perfect size for the girl he's making it for self constructing like, nano machines I think that's maybe they say that I don't fucking know but like I wish they would have gone a little bit more into nano it nano machines took our jabs nano machines took our gerbs dude they actually will take our gerbs nano machines will take our jobs but that's another reason why I like um and our robots jobs that, too. There's actually a whole like episode of Nadesco where that happens, what like Nick was talking about, like with the limbs and shit. Um that way they can go all rubbery limbed. They they, <laughs> they like, took they, they 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 talk about like balancing in space and stuff because so basically like the robots are called Estevales and all it really is is a cockpit and it goes in different that cockpit goes in different frames. So there's, like, the regular land frame, which is, like, its normal version. And then that cockpit can go into, like, a, a thing called the aerial frame, which is built to, like, fly around the air. And then there's a zero-G frame, which is built to be in space. And that frame has, like, certain thrusters on limbs and everything like that. But there's a part where they get separated from the ship, and the main character, Akito, like... He's like, we're not going fast enough, and it's like making me making the physics all fucked up. So I gotta let go of the arms and the legs. So he lets he like he does a program thing in his cockpit where the the legs and arms detach, and then he detaches the core frame, and then it's basically just the cockpit like because they're gonna run out of yeah. oxygen or whatever. So they're trying to float back to the so ship. What, what? Oh, your your point is that it's realistic. Yeah, yeah, and I, I like how the, even just that one episode and just the little 10 seconds of explaining they do every so often, like, I liked when they do that. And in Bubblegum it's Crisis, It's like inflating a balloon. Yeah, in Bubblegum Crisis, drama they do that. I don't Wait, You mean you like that. when Evangelion explained thermodynamics, how hot things expand? Yeah, that was more of a sex joke, but... <laughs> <laughs> well, and see, like, Evangelion is weird, too, because... It was in Magma Diver, one of the weaker episodes in the show, but... Evangelion is weird too. I don't even know how I feel about that one because no, like okay, Evangelion is different because they're directly like referencing Gundam, 
So in in most of the older and not just Gundam but other robot shows, like you had the super robots like Mazinger and Getter Robo and shit. And then you had Gundam, which actually had a story and is actually good. And um, it's actually good. <laughs> <laughs> and how Shout does Evangelion the reference shows that? the seventies? Because it is especially Gundam. Like it even has the same battle theme almost. It's like this distorted battle theme, but like uh, they in in Gundam like. He's piloting this lifeless robot that has no, like, uh, it, it doesn't have any character or anything. And in Evangelion, it's kind of a mixture. It's like, it's like bio, or it's like a, not cyborg, what's the word for it? Bio- Biomechanical. Biomechanical. Yeah. yeah. And then, it, you know, they kind of just play with that trope a little bit, where usually the robot is just this lifeless thing. That has but not it, a, that's not a reference, know. Nick. What do you mean reference? You use the word reference. It's not directly referencing Gundam. It's but not it's, referencing it's, it at all. It's 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 deconstructing Gundam. Deconstructing. I don't. I didn't want to use that word because you guys get fucking. Yeah. But oh, especially oh. especially Gundam. Especially Gundam. Um, but yeah, like the, the, even going, in, it's more. It's like almost hard sci-fi, but it's obviously it's not. But what's sport. weird is that you pointed out the robot part when. The robot part is not the major deconstruction. It's the pilot part is the major deconstruction. Well, the robot part is a deconstruction too because it's not. Yeah, actually but that's a full not robot, really but... the important part. Well, the it, big thing it's, is in it's, Gundam it's you have about the series, young teenage yeah. pilots that go around killing people and they never show much as far as psychological resp- reactions yeah, to that. Exactly. Well, Evangelion, they do. That was the big difference. But I'm saying. Well, no, and the other difference is the is the yeah, it's a difference, but it's not like that's not something that comes that's, from but Gundam. The that was something that comes I'm saying from their this is story. relevant to the topic, though. This is the relevant part to the topic, not the psychological part. Yeah, but the so part that you just described doesn't make there. sense at all. What do you mean it doesn't make sense? Because what the, the fuck deconstruction are you about? was not why the mecha is biomechanical. That was part of the original story bit. There's no motivation yeah, in yeah, deconstruction that's part, to make that's part it biomechanical. Of the, that's part of the deconstruction. How? Because I I already explained it. No, because mostly the robots didn't. the robots were always lifeless, and then suddenly they have. That's life. not how a deconstruction works, Nick. That's kind. That's kind of how it's it works. Like not it's at like all. A simplified version. <laughs> Fine. Then define define deconstruction. Deconstruction is where you take something. Good luck with that. And you break it down to its basic themes, and then rebuild upon that. So yeah, so the basic theme is the robot has no life, and then they add life. Yeah, but they didn't. That's rebuilding. They added that as a whole new thing, not as something that came from those original core attributes. Like the nature of the pilots in Evangelion comes from the fact that in Gundam you have young pilots. (laughs) They do all this terrible stuff. No, there's that. There's that. That's the core things. But then in the show Gundam, they never really have psychological responses. But when you take those core building blocks, they have some in Gundam. They're actually and construct it. More realistically, you end up with psychological, heavy psychological responses in the pilot. I don't want to get into spoilers, but you though. don't I can't, go I can't talk about that into spoilers. the basic bu- uh, building blocks of what Gundam is, and then end up with biomechanical mecha. That's something new entirely. Well, that's what de- I mean. Deconstruction is kind of new. I mean, it's like, oh, what would happen if it was real life? That's like the basic version of it. Yeah, making something new is not a deconstruction. I mean, technic- you- technically, anything you make is new. <laughs> Every, everything is a deconstruction. I know what you mean. Okay, we got it. Yeah, everything is. My point is that it's a lifeless robot turns into biomechanical. That's it. And the show is not hard sci-fi. It's more... It's like... It's almost a mixture because, like, obviously there's this fantasy elements with the angels and, um, you know, certain things. But they also try to, they also try to like, stick to realistic physics in Evangelion that, like, the robots can't fly and do bullshit, like, all, and all that it's it's not like Gundam where you know they have infinite. It's not infinite really, but Gun, in Gundam it's like they have an unrealistic amount of of power in the robot. Like in the first episode of Evangelion, they have like they have a plug, not the plug suit. Well, the plug suit too, but the, there's a there's a, a power cable. cord. Like a literally, there's like literally like a power cord. There's a micro in the USB robot. cable plugged into the back. Yeah, of Ava they have to like send power to the robot through a giant cable, <laughs> and like that's. <laughs> It's just showing like the the massive amount of energy they need to put into it just to get it to work. Well, it's also a decent fail. In other safe. shows, they don't need to do that because they have like the uh, the what is it the the particles that that power up the Gundam. I forgot what they're called. And essentially, it's magic. But in even Galley, they don't really use. But it also magic functions per se, as a decent fail angels. safe because the builders 
quote unquote, of the Evangelion recognized that it could go crazy and being able to unplug it until it dies is advantageous. Yeah. Keeping it having a short self-propelled lifespan. It's basically this giant Frankenstein thingy. <laughs> it's the hound. No, that's the my explanation. It's the mountain. Oh, man. It's Gregor it's Clegane. The, uh, to Clegane be, to Bowl, be fair, Clegane Bowl. Mobile Suit Gundam is one of the many inspirations that Anno drew from. No, yeah, anyway, anyway. obviously inspiration, but that's different than deconstruction. Mac, since you're a sci-fi buff, what's like your favorite anime only sci-fi tropish thing that you haven't seen in other sci-fi stuff? Hey? Anime tropish sci-fi thing like, that what's I a, haven't what's seen. What's like in a other technology stuff? in sci-fi that you've only seen in anime and not in like live action or American? sci-fi well we have gundams and mecha <laughs> no we've seen that mechas anime. we've seen shit like yeah, that yeah but that was inspired from anime though oh it was deconstructed shit. from anime yeah well the problem is, is that I haven't seen a lot of sci-fi anime that's a problem hmm Mac doesn't like it unless it not has not the dominator from romance. psychopaths what a weapon that can read somebody's likelihood to, to do shit. Yeah. <laughs> their criminal index. Whatever. Yeah, their crime was. coefficient. Uh, Isn't that just like Minority Report though? Kind of. The whole show no. is but the weapon itself is very not like Minority Report. Um, what does the weapon do? Like we need to explain it for the audience. So in Minority Report they have a giant computer construct that can specifically predict the future as in like here is exactly what will happen the dominator is just a gun that kind of scans people's brain waves and determines their likelihood of committing a crime that so that is tangentially related yeah That's the, pretty similar. the story's very similar you can't say it's nothing like that it's very very similar to no that. the <laughs> story is very the gun much is similar the technology yeah. specifically fairly different because yeah, they do very different end goals. I know, but based on that description, it sounds very similar to me. Um, I've, I haven't seen Psycho Pass yet. I really got to watch that. I've seen Ghost Don't watch show, second season. Psychopath. Just don't bother. Yeah, I've, I've heard not good things about season two. Didn't they have like different staff or something? I don't know. It just kind of no like drops everything that happened in the first. Oh, you season. know what happened? I, I heard that like they wanted to end it on season one and then they forced him to write more. I don't know. That's what I'm going to believe. But that would be a cool weapon to Mac, have. Mac, you can't come up with any <clears throat> sci-fi anime stuff? I'm like half asleep, damn it. <laughs> well, don't be. Damn it. Yeah, wake up, Mac. Wake up. Um, Just for a little bit. I mean, you bring up a point with Dominator. I've never seen that in sci-fis that I've seen personally. Nothing quite like that anyway. Nothing like that showed up in Star Trek? I feel like that would be the place where it'd be like something that the the one thing that they carry around all the time can suddenly do in one episode that never gets talked about again. No, they never did anything like that. I mean, Star Trek had empaths, you know, the... The, um, fuck. I'm too tired for this shit. Um, what, what the fuck is that race called? Uh, Klingon? No, they're not fucking <laughs> Klingons. <laughs> they're Klingons to me. Human? Let's just call them Klingon. No, they're not humans. They're, Borg? um, um, um Yub Yub E? Borg. There we go. That's <laughs> probably right. Nobody knows this. Definitely um, human. all right. They're the Klingon and the Borg. Let's go with that. Beta Z, yeah. If they're if they're Beta Z, then they can read other people's minds and communicate telepathically. <clears throat> but there's really nothing the telepathy like is like magic, isn't it? An action? No, there's there's nothing like an actual weapon that can read your desires. Actually, actually, there was one discreet episode about. An ancient Vulcan weapon that uses your mind and turns it, then uses your your mind's power to do shit. But that's the closest that I'm coming up with this on. 
But that was like a one-off episode. But, I mean, it's... I, I, Wait, what kind of shit does it do? Kills people? <laughs> Like it uses your mind to kill you or to uses your mind to kill somebody else? Uses your mind to kill somebody else. Basically, the way it worked was is if you had aggressive thoughts at the time, then you were killed by it. Like if you were thinking aggressively, but if you were thinking passively, and not, you know, not aggressively and, you know, at peace You're just and casually shit, then you, thinking, then you won't get, I you won't get hurt them. by it. Interesting. That's that's about the closest that I can come to. That's it. almost exactly. I can't uh I can't remember the name of it to save my life, but there was an episode about that. I think it was about season three or season four of the next generation, one of the two. I've seen a lot of Star Trek. <laughs> a whole lot of Star Trek. So one technology I saw in in a show, can't remember what show it was, but this guy had like a flute or something, and when he played it, it would like project images. Futurama hollow recorder. That's a good one. Those should be real. <laughs> we should make that. I mean, anime that would be year. pretty cool. We're talking about technology we want to see that we've seen in anime. Big robots. What else do you want? Get the fuck out of here. They're at, Big robots they, are lame. Are they going to have a battle between the U.S. and Japan? And super heavy. Yeah, America ago. made some stupid piece of shit, and Japan made this really awesome. Ours had guns, and there's that actually that happen or not? swords. Yeah, well, because yeah, Japan's are honorable, are and America's fucking dumb. Well, no, whatever happened with that? It's still supposed to be happening. I think they're still not ready. I think they're still not ready. I think it's supposed to be happening soon, though. Well, that was 2017. So there's going to be a mecha battle between U.S. and Japan. Yep. So we're going to send, what, the fourth child, and they're sending, like, the <laughs> third child or some shit? We're going to send Mari Makanami, no. and they're going to send Shinji Ikari. Dude, Mari no, they're is sending like they're fuck. sending an actual child. We're probably sending some fat guy with a with a gut beer, gut belly. Diabetes. A, they're going to have Zabiano <laughs> piloting. Except they're not a cracker-ass cracker. So yeah, no. so I'd have to go. As the rule of anime goes, no brown people are allowed in meccas. So, except if it's a Gundam it with a sombrero. <laughs> yeah, or I think Iron Blooded Orphans had a lot. Um, of, a Gundam lot with of sombrero. His name is Spike Gundam. You racist. Spike Spiegel the Gundam. Speaking of Spike Spiegel, Cowboy Bebop, uh, sci-fi, right? How do the themes play into that show? There wasn't actually. They didn't really use a lot of sci-fi themes. It was more like a western. The one episode I they can think did, of that's but they never really delved significantly into it. Yeah, more sci-fi not, was the one with the guy in really the coma, example. like projecting messages out to people. Oh yeah, the chess player. That was no, probably that was like one. the most sci-fi episode I can remember, outside of just the general spaceships and planets and yeah, stuff. Yeah, that was more of a drama show than sci-fi. It was really they didn't the, the sci-fi didn't play a large role in it. That I was guess. just like the backdrop. Was like yeah. Different planets and spaceships and shit. But uh, we already talked about Gunbuster. Oh, what are the questions here? So do you feel... Oh, what themes or ideas do you think anime doesn't cover well enough in sci-fi? Or does it cover too well? (laughs) I don't know. I think it's just a really good backdrop. Like, to have sci-fi as your uh, vehicle to show... You know, certain themes like in Serial Experiments Lane, they had good Mac, show. Mac has seen that, I think, mm-hmm. where it's all about the internet and like people's lives uh, get like. Dude, Lane fucked me trapped up. Trapped in the man. internet and shit. I Lane actually really don't remember. <clears throat> I don't remember what happens in the show. Like that. I haven't seen it in like what happens ten and years. what doesn't happen. Those are the two questions about that show. I think I think it's like they explain everything at the end. But anyway, like <laughs> the show basically deals with the internet and like what role it has in our lives and like, you know, they they made the show in the late nineties when everyone was like paranoid about the internet taking over everything and oh no, we're all gonna get trapped in it and stuff and <clears throat> it didn't really Little go that did way. No, it would be got, Pokemon that ends us all. Yeah, we would just be posting dank memes in social media all the time instead of <laughs> getting an existential crisis. 
but uh, that shows does a really cool job of of showing like the uh, potential dangers of the internet. And I think Ghost in the Shell has a lot of similar themes with the uh, because you can just plug your brain into different vessels, like different bodies or whatever. And they had a whole arc in the first season with like the Laughing Man, where he was like hacking into people. I think, or that was the movie too. Yeah, it just has like all these really cool themes that you can do with, uh, like any anytime you can like plug a brain into an, like a network, that's just a really cool theme. There was an episode of Star Trek: The Original Series called Spock's Brain, where Spock's brain got taken out and plugged up to a computer. Probably one of the worst episodes of the original <laughs> series. That's one thing I was gonna just ask, like, like look at porn the whole time. Is there technology that you see or have ever seen in an anime? I guess sci-fi in general that kind of just annoys you like just the basic principles of the sci-fi technology just kind of like you're just like this is stupid every single time well we know Koka hates mech yeah mech are stupid um mech are really fucking cool though (laughs) I don't care if it's inefficient (laughs) uh what, what's a bad thing that we don't Mecha like Mecha are sci-fi? especially cool when they have giant wings. That's how you make them super cool. See that? I can't even like that right there. Or head wings like in... I don't know, Amazon. man. See, <laughs> I know I said, okay. Like, I know I said that I liked it in the Desco and they explained all that shit. But like, in in anime like Gundam Wing or G Gundam, that's, a, that's one of those times where you can't let it like... You can't let it, that bother you. Because those Gundams were clearly made to be, to look a certain way and sell models. So it was like, they made them all ridiculously weird and crazy looking. Yeah, the rule of cool. Yeah, but 8th MS team only has like one Zaku that looks particularly crazy. But 8th MS team is like the most realistic Gundam, isn't it? It's also got boobies. I would say that one in War in the Pocket, yeah. Yeah, War in the Pocket, That's I meant that as well. Yeah. I always mix them up, I don't know why. But that's because I think I feel I like think, Gundam only works in space. Like it would only make sense to have a Gundam in space because you wouldn't want something that big running around with all like gravity and shit. Like all the parts would just break. So well, that's quickly. the big thing is like, how do you fix some of that shit? Like the smaller, yeah, it's so just going like, to be breaking parts. down constantly. The, oh, Minofsky particles. And you have to take it, it all the particles apart. fix everything, right? <laughs> yeah. Nano machines, man. I don't know. What about the the mad scientist trope where there's like one scientist who just does everything? Like Mac, imagine diagnosing hydraulic failure on a Gundam. I mean, I I wouldn't even know where to start because the systems are probably retarded as shit. Or electronics, like if the turn signal doesn't want to come on. Why would a Gundam have a turn signal? <laughs> because when they're moving in formation, they might cut each other off. Why are they moving in formation? They need to be doing because they got a march. Shit, they got a march. That way, you can Gundam get them march. all into one shot, so you can see them all on the screen at the same. So time. So they can cover with proper cones of fire. Why else do you move in a formation? Well, it's the flying V, as we learned in no, the it's Mighty the walking Ducks. V, the most powerful formation. <laughs> you, just, you just fucking skate at their goal in a V shape. What are they gonna do? shoot you but (laughs) i don't know what about what about like those giant okay you know what i don't like this is in star wars i don't like the really fucking giant gun laser weapons like of doom like the death star type shit i I actually really think death star is really cool but that would (laughs) that would never work (laughs) you know know. star trek ripped off of star wars star star trek enterprise the sphere builders star trek ripped off star wars Yes. Yeah, they had this freaking <laughs> doomsday sphere thing that could blow up planets. That's a total freaking ripoff. True story. <laughs> I'm just going to reference Star Trek to everything that anybody says. At, <laughs> at the same time, like let's be let's like let's be real for a minute, okay? But then again, Star Trek gave us cell phones. So, that's true, it did. From the 60s. No, it and it didn't also gave because us because Star Trek's technology was based on cloud-based uh, terminals, not an actual personal computer. Here we go. 
I said cell phone. As phones. we know, guys, you a cell are phone technically is wrong. A, Therefore, you're completely is wrong. Is a personal computer. Yeah, I had a Razer phone too once. Anyways, Actually, here's a the cell thing. phone is primarily oh a communication device that has in modern well, day it moved, used to be. in modern days moved to the UHF band. Used to be in VHF. Yeah, but it's but still communicators work the same basic it's a way. Personal computer. You got a little notification, you picked it up and you talked to somebody. Why? It's a cell phone. While the communicator would connect mostly th- into mobile a, phones. No, the idea the, the of communicator mobile phones worked off the communication system off the starship. Same way with popularity. the little communicator badges used in the next generation Voyager in Deep Space Nine. DS9, man. DS9. Deep Dick 9. Okay, here's the thing. Just, Smokey, shut up for a second. The thing is, when you break it down for me personally... And this is why, you know, uh, Nick's white. The thing is, is when you break it down and you, when I really watch, sit down and watch an anime, that science stuff, I don't give a fuck about. Like, I don't fucking Yeah, most care. people don't care about it. And that's why if you, you see a lot if, of school comedies while they're If you too. do it like, if you do it like Nadesco. And have all this really technical stuff, and they explain something one time, and then never touch on it again, and then do some rule breaking shit later. Then that shit's dumb, and I I can agree with that. But like, I just need people sitting at like computer terminals yelling shit like an Evangelion. <laughs> they're like, "It's an angel!" <laughs> and like, they're I think for me it just needs nuts. That's what I want to see. I don't care about the inner workings of it. For me, it just needs to be consistent. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm. It doesn't even have to be consistent. What about Gurren Lagan? That's not consistent. <laughs> well, that's Gurren generally Lagan. that's bigger. like favor technology that's like fairly well explained and based in reality. Obviously, things like Gurren Lagan, it's like the point is that it's not real. And there's certain things where it's fine that certain bits are not explained for the purposes of the story that's trying to be told. Something like Kisniver. You don't need all the technology about how the Kisna system works. And yet they tried to explain they it at one point. Did not at all do that. They did briefly. Because <laughs> you like it's just they it's not important to the story that's being told. To get by show. with the basic concept in your head. They never attempted to actually explain it in yeah. depth. The all most they gave explanation you was that they did thought. was the blue haired chick's connection to the past of it, like what happened, but it wasn't the technological battle. And then things like uh what? Is it like plastic memories? You don't need to know exactly what happens to the robots that causes them to go fucking crazy and kill people. It's not important. That's not the story that's being told. Well, yeah. And well, okay. Plastic memories has a lot of problems though. Like the whole premise of the show is just flawed. Cause that would make sense if she was not a robot, <laughs> you know, the dying, the, what is it? The, the no, see, the that's what I'm saying is like the trope. story that's being told is hinges on that piece of the technology working the way it does. So yeah. that's in that mm-hmm. realm of... But in the case of Plastic know, Memories, it was stupid. <laughs> I mean, it was Blade Runner. It was Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep. It was an established concept yeah. that they were using to tell Which the story. stupid. And that falls into that realm of, like, <laughs> you know, will, willful suspension of disbelief. But it's when... The things that mainly bug me are when things don't make sense and there's no reason for them to need to work that the way that they do. It's like everything in anime, though. Like where it just is, gotta, it doesn't sell su- doesn't make the story That's better that it functions that way. It doesn't humanoid shaped. It doesn't function into the you know the story and framing device of it. It just like is, and you're just like, why couldn't they have just done the thing that makes it actually make sense? But can we just talk about for a second and just ask the question: How did Krillin and Android 18 do the dirty do? Because they made oh, she's a cyborg, right? <laughs> she's not actually just a robot. She's got a uh, lady parts. She sells lady parts. That's right. Okay, yeah, that's right. I remember that now. They Shut just up. adopted. Yeah, get fucked some. <laughs> no, I just Artificial forgot. Artificial insemination test tube, dear. Also, there's a lot of NTR dojins with Android 18 because Krillin is definitely a couple. Maybe Krillin fucked some other girl and they just adopted the kid. Yeah, he, maybe, he eloped with Maybe Chi Chi was the surrogate. <laughs> no, it was Marin, the girl who was in those filler episodes. That maybe Bulma saga. was the surrogate. Yeah. Garlic. Maybe 
Cookie and Cracker were the surrogates. Yeah, we should uh, briefly mention, though, Sword Art Online and the the video game uh, technology. The VR stuff. Premise where everyone's trapped in a video game. Yeah, vi- I'm actually, reality trap. How many trapped in a video game ones exist where there isn't something significantly supernatural that, that happens? Because I know like Overlord and Log Horizon, something else happens. It's not just the technology. God, don't even get me started. Well, on was it um, just like Dot Hack and Sword Art that do proper trapped in a game? Or is Dot Hack that guy not yeah, actually trapped in the game because he's not a real human? Is that the case? I haven't seen that shit in like forever. I haven't seen Dot Hack actually. Um Dot Hack is like they never really in Dot Hack sign, they never really show too much of the outside. Most of the anime, like I want to say ninety percent of it yeah, is but, in game. I mean, do they ever find out if that guy's even a player, the guy that can't log out? Sukasa is a girl. Yeah, so who's a is that guy who's a player Sukasa. or spoiler alert so log out? Yes, she's a player. She's a player and she can't log out. What's happening to her? I don't remember. I haven't seen it in so long, but it, I did really like it. I not, I I, don't, I remember liking it. I just don't remember what happened to her. Oh, I think she like went into a coma, and then like she didn't. She she it happened when she was playing, and then they took her to the hospital. I don't. Was I don't fucking name? remember. No, I that was Sword Art Online. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Sword Art Online ripped that part off. But um, uh, no. Dot hack ripped off Sword Art. That's how the things work now. So. Wow, you say you like Sword Art one time, <laughs> no. and then I Sword get Art, fucking concentrated. Sword Art deconstructed for it. Like, shut it up, from you're hack, stupid. Okay? Yeah, it deconstructed oh it because uh, they had dead Gundams. Now they have all right. Gundams. Moving on. This the, all these shows that we're talking about. Everything that we talked about just now sucks. <laughs> moving on. Trapped in a video game. I think it's a cool concept, and that's why Sword Art Online was popular. Well, it's a fucking great even concept. If, even if it. Even if it sucked in execution, it was a really cool concept. The first couple episodes are really neat. And I think the first episode is the best episode in the whole series. To well, be yeah, pretty much everyone. I liked that. how at the start of the show the characters were a lot more like. Well, I'm not saying it because everyone said it. I'm saying it because they're a lot more it. cool looking. And then after they got their bodies <laughs> changed to be anymore. real, they started looking more cartoon. Well, I don't base my opinions on other people like you do, Nick. Have you guys you actually go, gone back and watched the beginning of Sword Art where they're like. The art style is very different for the characters, and then they get more cartoony by being changed into what their real avatars are supposed to be. I actually didn't notice that part. Doesn't no, bother I, me. I was just saying it's funny. Yeah, it is funny. That sounds kind of cartoon racist, Quoka. All cart. I don't see cartoon <laughs> as different types. All right, different scales of cartoon. All look the same. Ping to me. pong looks the same as Nietzsche Joe. Okay. Yeah, ping pong is is just the same. It's Ghost in the Shell. They look exactly the same. No difference. Ghost in the Shell sucks. Moving we, on. We gotta talk about Ghost in the Shell. That's like the that's like the big sci fi anime. Okay, this is what it is. Everybody the knows. first film is badass. Standalone complex is badass if you don't get bored easily. And the second movie, Innocence, was And Triple A was I think standalone I, complex is the most AAA, accessible. Right? Then there's like Arise I haven't and watched, live action coming Yeah, out. I haven't watched any of those newer ones yet. I've heard they're terrible. But Ghost in the Shell like were, actually could happen in real life. They could though. Like the Laughing Man. Oh man. Oh dude, what about Steins Gate? Uh time travel. Are, are we gonna talk about time travel or not? Is that sci fi? No, uh, no, no. Is that, is that I mean, sci fi or sci-fi? magic? Is it based on microwaves? It's sci fi. Sci- time travel sci-fi, kind of. Well, it depends assuming, on whether it's used not, like, from doing... the perspective of fantasy like, or the perspective of yeah, science. If it's like a magical girl, then it's not. <laughs> Is but, this the kind of time travel where you go so far forward in time that you start over at the beginning? Yeah, like on Futurama? Or... Man, Futurama's Is Futurama? great. Anime of the season. Know. Yeah, Futurama, dude. Or Rick yeah, and Morty. Anime of all Rick time. And, Rick and Morty did it. But uh, yeah, Steins Gate though. We should talk about that. I mean, well, we didn't even talk about Ghost in the Shell. <laughs> we we kind of mentioned Ghost in the Shell. Like it's just really realistic, and I don't know what what else do we have to say. Like just the themes and concepts could exist in real life. It's very well produced. Everybody should watch Ghost in the Shell if they haven't. It's like a must see. 
Uh, Wait, how I does Ghost in the Shell handle like, the uh, cybernetic enhancements the you can watch and stuff? The series. I mean, they re- they just replace body parts like all the time. I know Mik- Makoto just like goes into the shop and she's like, "Give me a new body, bitch!" Boom, and they give her a body. Yeah, because like her body gets destroyed. But is it like all like... mechanical? Is it like bio printed? Yeah, stuff? it's all mechanical. No, it's the only thing that's anything that's the skin is like the realistic. skin is like the most closest to. I don't know what they say. I don't Actually, think, I think they ever. I think blood? she can have sex. Too. Or did they I think have she's like able to the the plug fluid? No, it's not. It's not blood. It's like okay, it's no, robot blood. CLC. That the, the LCL. LCL. <laughs> VLC. She's gonna play some videos on her. It's LCL. Salt Lake City. But no, fucking. It's Salt Lake City. Yeah, Salt Lake City. The thing about the thing about um. The thing about the bodies or whatever that she goes into or whatever whoever else uses and goes in the shell is if you can imagine it's like uh uh it's like living material over an endoskeleton uh, endoskeleton like in Terminator except there's no blood and I don't think the skin is actual skin but well, I don't even know if it's they all even synthetic. Say what it's made of. Oh, <laughs> it's synthetic. Okay. It's real skin. <laughs> they just take real people and skin them. Well, in <laughs> Terminator it's cell, but yeah. Or no, it's realistic skin. Yeah, I don't know. Whatever. Fucking Terminator's awesome. <laughs> they 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 go to the Indians and they skin their scalps and that's how they get hair. Wow. And, uh, yeah. You had to bring in fucking manifest. Actually, that was the other way around. Didn't, didn't, the, didn't the didn't the Indians no, do the scalping? The base of the scalping the was scalp. the fact that white people would be paid for the scalps of Indians. Oh, I thought Nick it was, was both referring ways, to actually the, the Indians. I thought Nick was referring to the fake hair industry where like people in India, like in Asia, people in India <laughs> like Indians. cut their hair off and I thought that's what he meant. I don't know, never mind. I'm stupid. We're just but cut yeah, that I'm pretty out. sure she can have sex too, so Yeah, we should cut that up. Makoto can definitely bang. Makoto can bang. I heard it here first. I think there was an episode where like a boy was like, I want to do it. And then she's like, do you want to? And then he's like, no. And he chickened out. And you would have been I'm like, pretty sure that yes. Happened. I like, I'm not trolling. I actually think that happened in the show. I don't remember. I haven't seen it in about 10 years, but um, I haven't seen it in 10 years. The funny thing <laughs> is Ghost, Ghost in the Shell still looks better than like 95% of anime. Because they they had a huge Ghost fucking budget. show looks so good. Show does look yeah, good. except for the opening. The opening looks a little wonky with the CG, but even then, um, yeah. Ghost in the Shell. What about Planetess? Planetess. That's super hard. I sci-fi. definitely love like that because it does no orbital mechanics properly. That. And was it Kepler syndrome? Is what they call it? That space cancer or mm, something? No, I could be totally off on this, but it's the whole um. That from all the launches, we end up with like a sphere of debris around the planet. And that's the whole per- concept of But I heard that that story. wouldn't happen. I heard that that wouldn't happen if we did it right. Well, Maybe yeah, but you have to do it right. That's the whole part. Yeah. Or if they did it really wrong. then I just don't, I find it really hard to believe that like a little tiny screw or a nail could just bust up an entire spaceship. Well, when it's traveling at like 3 million kilometers relative velocity... Yeah, but how would it Kessler get that fast? Syndrome. Like, wouldn't it, wouldn't it, wouldn't it zing outside of the atmosphere was, at that point? It was an exaggeration, but <laughs> it's like really fast. There's no way. No, it's like, still let's being... say orbital velocity. I'm not sure exactly it just, what like, it is. Incinerate at that point? No, it wouldn't because there's nothing to incinerate it. The atmosphere. The dude. atmosphere of space. The atmosphere down. in the vacuum of space. No, of Earth. It it's in space. It's not in Earth. Yeah, but it would get sucked downward, that's, or it would get slingshotted outward, and that's how they—that's how they fly ships. They slingshot. <laughs> what the? F- See, I'm bringing in some sci-fi knowledge. That's they slingshot not things at all. They use gravity. Yeah, they calculate. But, They're just like, like let's we're gonna say slingshot from Earth to Mars. That orbital fucking, velocity at like 200 kilometers is Saturn? like, you know, 3,000 meters per second. It's probably like 1,500 meters per second. Whatever. We'll say it's 1,500 meters per second. But if you're traveling in the opposite direction, now you're going at 3,000 meters per second difference. The other thing is, like, if they had debris That's, like that it, up there, why would they have? Why would they have any people in that zone? <laughs> they don't. It's about the. It's mainly about did, the ships going between the two. From oh yeah, the surface so they, it's like an asteroid belt. Outer orbit. It's, 
just an asteroid belt then, right? Except Essentially, but it's made out of screws like and bolts. Tiny bullshit. I mean, yeah. I saw that show a while ago. You have to have, like space is good. massive, so the likelihood of you ever hitting something would be insane. But it still happens to people, even in just Kerbal Space Program. People have Dude, been hit by debris and gone blown work? the fuck up. Dude, I wonder what their insurance premiums are for that shit. Dude, there's spaceship insurance. <laughs> Probably about tree fitia. I mean, <laughs> probably about tree fitty. <laughs> but there really is spaceship insurance. It's kind of interesting. I looked it up because I wanted to insure my spaceship that I call my dick. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> it's like on Austin Powers when they're like, "Look on the radar. It looks one like a time, giant pecker." The one time I wasn't expecting that, like a my dick joke. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that right, Mac? Absolutely. Mac, how you doing? So what do we think about Trigun? How you doing, Mac? I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna throw I'm out anime. Barely titles. awake. Speaking of not being, how awake, do you feel about Mac? What do you think about porn robots? Scroll, scroll, scroll. Oh my god, you guys! What? We talk about that. How do you feel about porn robots? Like Those Futurama too. Like not sex robots, but porn robots. Robots that do porn for people. Oh, that's interesting. Because they could replace body parts and have like ten dicks. You mean like they'd always sex, have the perfect body? Sex toys like robot sex toys? No, like ones that just make I don't videos. Know. That you can't <laughs> own. Robot. I just don't feel comfortable unless two like tone robots. Alone okay, is playing the you mean part. robots? This is gonna have to be an AO episode. Robots <laughs> acting the, in porn? Yeah, like robot people. That's stupid. Robot Why people just acting watch in porn. porn. I would just watch regular but porn. But why? When you could have the perfect body of a robot porn. There's yes, a lot um, of there's the perfect a lot of body and the dead eyes. Okay. Don't you want that? Okay, I don't <laughs> the know. Dead the dead eyes. I don't know where it'd the be fuck. Like, some, it'd, it'd be like a foldable just in porn. I don't know. Okay, you guys are stupid. I don't know where you guys have been, but the, the internet is huge. Okay? Like, <laughs> there's a chick out there for you. I promise. Yeah, but what if she doesn't want to do the <laughs> things there's not, that I there's want a robot her to do? There. There's a video of a chick out Trust me. Like, like Ayumu Saya Sena hasn't done a bunch of super gangbang stuff. I don't know. Search for Sasha Gray then. Shit. Look, Close we can't all be. You can't be picky. Like, it's not all about you. But I could be picky if there was robot porn out there. All I want is a robot that can detach its wiener and like put on different types of wieners. <laughs> detachable penis. And you have to yeah. call it a wiener too. Nick wants a detachable penis. And on that bombshell, then, we uh, need to be do like, final like thoughts and stuff. Look, my final thought is... Oh, we oh yeah, talk we'll, about do the movie, we'll do the movies and TV Akira, things dude. next week. All right, my final thought's going to be about Akira. <laughs> okay. Is it just that? That Akira exists? Oh, I thought I was going after someone. Uh, okay, Akira is like <laughs> the main re- one of the main reasons that we have like a lot of the shit we do now. It showed that sci-fi was dope as fuck, and True. even True. though it happened like right before a crisis of the '90s, and they couldn't make shit for a few years, it was like, "Hey guys, look at Akira. We can make shit now." And then sci-fi, more sci-fi happened. Some badass shit happened. Akira, dude. Yo, it's we like, can do it, shit. It, it, it like, not only that, but it like really kind of started the boom of anime in the in the West. It was like one of the first ones. My final thought is what Nick said, and I also that I remember seeing commercials for the VHS tape for Akira. They wouldn't. It was like an infomercial, and you had to like call to order it because they wouldn't sell it in like a Suncoast video or nothing. It was weird. And they won't sell it anymore because no more VHS players, dude. Shit. I still have all my... I have my Akira VHS with the original dub. I got the DVD. Don't you want that 24 FPS n- Newer dub. <laughs> the dub. The best. I, too, like sci-fi motorcycles. That's why I love Tron. And you should, too. Ooh, do you like Bakuan, then? That's not sci-fi. Oh and no, that has a sci- like you. It has a motorcycle that's a transgender. <laughs> Oh man, Bakuan is probably better than Akira, though. Like r- real talk. Okay. Oh my god! And Shut on up! That oh my show, god! We're done. <laughs> I've been We're Quoka, done. which me has been Mac, Nick, and Sam. Well, Mac sort of been here, I guess. Mm, Max and this sleeping. has been the Anime Summit podcast.
Hey guys, Quagga here. Uh, I want to do a little bit of a preemptive thing in two weeks. Um, we're going to be talking about doing like review type thing and talking about the Idol Master and Bubblegum Crisis Neo Tokyo 2040. So if you want to watch a bit of both of those shows so that you can better follow along with the episode in two weeks or watch them entirely, uh, that would be awesome. It might just uh, make the experience a little bit better. I don't know. Uh, the, the, the show's over, so bye.